Okay, so my three-part trilogy, if you will, has turned into a four-part miniseries because I seem to have forgotten some uh, details that I wanted to do. For instance, I forgot to give you the transformation uh, equations for transforming back and forth between the XYZ and the spherical coordinates. And I uh, forgot to work out some of the uh, magnitudes of the R hats and the theta hats and the cylindrical coordinates. And even though I spelled them out in here uh, in the spherical coordinates video, I think it'd be best if I go ahead and show you that as well. So I'm going to try to make up for that. This will be my fourth of a series of three. Uh, so, you know, four out of three people don't know how to do fractions. I'm evidently one of them. <laughs> uh, anyways, this is going to be spherical coordinates part two. And like I said, I'm going to finish up a few things and uh, in spherical coordinates as well as in cylindrical coordinates. So let me go back to my document cam. I know you just want to see my face, so, was, you know, obliging. So I think it's pretty obvious for you to be able to tell how to find, uh, how to convert your uh, spherical coordinates back to cylindrical coordinates. So for instance, uh, it might be difficult unless you've learned of the, uh, the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, uh, which hopefully you have, but just in case, what we can think of is, hey, let's take this and pretend like we know this quantity right here, rho, because I know that quantity rho is on a line that is perpendicular. It's actually in the xy plane, so it's perpendicular to the z axis. So I know uh, z already, so I know that R squared is equal to Z squared plus Rho squared, just from the Pythagorean theorem, right? Well, that's cool because Rho also turns out to be this quantity up here, which I think you can tell is R times the sine of phi. So I'll say Z squared plus R squared sine squared phi. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, the problem is we've got the row and we've got the z, uh, but we don't really know r. We're in terms of r. So what are we to do? That looks kind of confusing, right? Well, we're trying to get rid of all the, the uh, uh, spherical coordinates. So what we could do is we could say, well, wait a second. If I know what row is, I wouldn't have to substitute that thing. Well, if I look at rho, oh, that's just the hypotenuse of a triangle with one leg x and another leg y. So rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So now I can substitute that in there, and I'd get r squared is equal to z squared plus x squared plus y squared, or r, and this is the final one, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's how you convert x, y, z to r. Of course, that's just r. We need r, we need theta, we need phi, because remember, these unit vectors are, in fact, actual functions of theta and phi. So if I want to know what theta is, that one's pretty straightforward. We know that from the previous uh, cylindrical coordinates video, that just happens to be the inverse tangent of y over x. So I've got now a relationship for finding uh, the theta from y and x. Now I just need one for finding the phi. And I think that is also pretty easy. Clearly, now that we know what r is, we can find what phi is because phi would be the inverse tangent of opposite, which is rho, which we know, over hypotenuse, or excuse me, inverse tangent over, over z, so excuse me. So the inverse tangent of phi, uh, or excuse me, the tangent of phi should equal rho over z, so the uh, phi should be the inverse tangent of rho over z. So uh, the rho is in fact x squared plus y squared. And then of course this is z on the bottom. 
And of course, this has got to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Sorry about that. So that's the uh, change in coordinates from x, y, z to the actual r theta phi. Let me double check, make sure everything's right. I know this is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That works. I know that tangent equals y over x. So inverse tangent of y over x should be theta. That works. Uh, I know that tangent of phi should be opposite, which is rho, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared over adjacent, which is z. So square root of x squared plus y squared over z. Uh, inverse tangent of all that gives me phi. Now, what about converting, uh, say, from uh, r theta phi to actually uh, x, y, z? So I think you can uh, figure out what that is. If I want to have an equation for x, OK, I see that x is going to have to be uh, gotten from rho, basically, because it has to be this part. So it's going to be basically a projection of r into the xy plane. So I'd have to say r times the sine of phi. And that gives me rho. And then I want to take the cosine of theta. So, which happens to be, by the way, the same thing as this, but without the R in front of it. And that's uh, not a coincidence, by the way. Okay. The Y transformation would, again, I'd have to take the R and project it down into the XY plane. And when you project it down into the XY plane, again, you see it's uh, sine phi times R. So I'm going to say R times the sine of phi. But now I've got to get this part, which is the sine of theta. And then finally, z. Z is just going to be the cosine of phi times r. So r cosine phi is, in fact, z. And notice that is also the parts of this. So in principle, when, uh, when you're dealing with uh, spherical coordinate systems, really all you have is a vector r can be expressed by r times r hat and r hat of course is a function of theta and phi and we gave it right there okay so uh the the definition that i was alluding to earlier is that r hat should equal a directional derivative which we call dr over dr but then i got to divide by its magnitude so it'd be dr over dr magnitude so if i just take the derivative of this which is little r times all these things. If I take the derivative of it with respect to r, I think you'd see that the r is just going to disappear because everything else is a constant. You're taking the derivative with respect to r, it's like multiplying by four and three and four and two and uh, three, right? So that's why we got exactly that. Similarly, the theta hat would be dr d theta over the magnitude again. And the phi hat would be dr d phi over the uh, magnitude again. And they would also give you those same formulas. So that's something I'd left off. Uh, something else I'd left off is calculating the actual magnitude of r hat. I again spelled it out for you, but let me work on that for you. So if you remember the, uh, the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, which we sort of just proved a second ago, we can take this and realize that r hat is just equal to sine phi cosine theta i hat plus sine phi sine theta j hat plus cosine phi k hat. So the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the magnitude of r hat is actually equal to the square root of sine squared phi cosine squared theta plus sine squared phi sine squared theta plus cosine squared phi. Again, I just proved that a second ago by showing you that I could get this from x squared plus y squared, but then that is perpendicular to z, so x squared plus y squared is this length, square root of that is this length, the square root of x squared plus y squared is this length, square, the z is a uh, length of this one. So if I square them both, that'd be the square root of x squared plus y squared squared, so that just becomes x squared plus y squared, 
plus the square of this, which would be z squared, take the square root, I get x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is what that was. So now I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna first off show you this by uh, factoring out the sine phi in the first term. So it's sine squared phi of cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta plus cosine squared phi. That's all that's left after I factor those two out of there. Of course, sine squared, cosine squared plus sine squared is just one. So this ends up becoming the square root of sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi. Of course, that's also just one. So it's the square root of one, which is one. So we see that in fact, uh, r hat is in fact a uh, unit vector. Theta hat, on the other hand, so we're doing double duty here by doing theta hat. Uh, we're doing it for the sp spherical coordinates as well as for the cylindrical coordinates. Uh, remember, phi, uh, theta hat was negative sine theta i hat plus cosine theta j hat. It's only got two components, so I square those. That becomes sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta take the square root, obviously sine squared plus cosine squared is one, so I get the square root of one, which is just one. So that one's done. And then there's phi hat, and of course phi hat was cosine phi, and then cosine theta i hat, plus cosine phi sine theta j hat, minus sine phi. K hat. Again, using our three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, uh, we get phi hat magnitude would equal cosine squared phi cosine squared theta plus cosine squared phi sine squared theta plus sine squared phi. Square root of all that stuff, of course. I can factor out a cosine squared in here and I get square root cosine squared phi of cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Clearly that's just one, but I also have plus sine squared theta or phi, excuse me, left over there. So that ends up becoming square root cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi. which you know for a fact is in fact one, so that's square root of one, which is just one. So now I've shown you that r hat, theta hat, and phi hat are all unit vectors as I calculated them. Uh, the only thing that's left is the r hat that I had before uh, from the Cartesian coordinates, which I did again hinted, uh, or for the uh, cylindrical coordinates, which I again had hinted at, but in this case, r hat was equal to cosine theta i hat plus sine theta j hat. So clearly the magnitude of r is just equal to the square root of cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which equals one again. So that's easy peasy. I think that gives it all. Uh, I did an integral of a dv for the cylindrical coordinates and was able to show you that the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. In the spherical coordinates, I did an integral of dv to show you that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds power squared. And then, of course, I gave you the coordinate transformation equations for cylindrical coordinates in video two. And now I've given you the transformation equation uh, for spherical coordinates in this video four of three. <laughs> All right, well, I hope that helps you. and. Uh, that, like I said, most of the stuff, if you're taking my calculus-based physics class, part two, I'm going to use those vectors r hat and theta hat just to give me something that I can, you know, use as a name. I'm not going to mess much with the actual sines and cosines and all that good stuff. Uh, but you feel free to do these actual derivatives. I'll just remind you that these uh, uh, derivatives, these directional derivatives are actually sort of uh, 
they're not just dr d theta they're what we call partial derivatives so they're a little bit different uh we basically can do them by uh taking say a gradient in a particular direction but anyways that's it so have a good day